So I need an intro here. Okay, intro, Artemis, stories from the field, August 2024. Let's go. There's so many things, there's so many stories that I want to share about Israel, about everything that's going on right now in the state of Israel, in the field. These are stories from the field about real people, real things that are people that people are going through. One of the first things that comes to mind is because it's everywhere. As you drive down the the streets in any city, there's there's bigger ones, there's smaller ones, there's memorials everywhere. There's things to remind people of the hostages. They put out these yellow chairs. There's chairs everywhere. Empty chairs, they call it. Empty chair because there needs to be a person sitting there and he's not sitting there because he's in, in captivity. He, she, young and old. So there's empty chairs. This is in my city. There's a, a lineup of, um, I don't know if they're, if they've taken some out as people have come back. There's a few people, four people that were rescued. There were some, some bodies that were recovered. So I don't know if the, that number is going down, but originally it was 136 chairs set out. I'm not sure. I might. I need to go back and, and check the numbers. The, originally, there was the, the however many hostages were taken, that's how many chairs were set out. And... Um, and it's baby chairs, it's cribs, it's, it's uh, like um, rocking chairs for the elderly. And you see this everywhere. There's a big memorial in, in Tel Aviv. There's, there's smaller ones. There's like any, any public space, any public forum uh, in, in the city, like the, um, the library or something, they, they put something out. And there's people that just hang stuff out of their, uh, off of their balconies, um, like a poster or a big... Um, a big banner saying, hey, you know, this is... Because everybody knows somebody. Everybody. It's a small country. It's not that many people. I haven't been here that long. I've been here for six years. And I know people that know people that have been taken. And, of course, I, I've met people because of the, the, the type of work I'm doing. I've interviewed plenty of these people, plenty of survivors, plenty of people that have told stories about about the miracles of, of survival, about terrorists right outside, and they just and they would throw grenades into windows, and just, they would just skip their window. The thing is, we're ten months into the war, closing in one year into the war. The hostages haven't come back. Those that that have are telling horrible stories about uh, about their time there. Like this conversation is is very big. I understand. There's so many things that can, that can be said. There's people that are not happy. There's plenty of people that are not happy here in the country with the way that the government is, is running this thing. Much less all the people outside that are screaming crazy terms about uh, the government doing things. I'm not one to, to talk. I'm not political. <laughs> because there's no government that's, that's perfect or benevolent, I should say. So not not getting into that. I'm talking about the way that people are going through this the situation. Everybody knows somebody in this country that has has been affected deeply by the war. There's so many things, so many areas that are affected by this war and by the by the ongoing situation. It just trickles down. It's not no one area of of life in Israel right now 10 months into the war is is free of influence of the war. So back to the memorials. We go to the bank the other day. I have a, a one year, uh, one and a half year old baby. She likes getting into stuff. And she runs up to this yellow chair and she grabs it and she starts pulling it around. The yellow chair is a missing person. It, it's such a reminder. We live... All of society here in Israel right now is just submerged into everything that's going on. And that has plenty of psychological effects, plenty of even, like I said, it trickles down to the economy, to the, to the way, to society, to people's morale and whatnot. This is politically, this is, everything's affected. But just the fact that it's a, the, there's everyday reminders of, of people gone, of, of 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 the massacre, of everything that that's been happening. We all know soldiers. We all know young men and women that are fighting, that have plenty of stories to tell as well. Why is this important? Because 
outside of Israel, the 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 news cycle is so short. The, on with everything that's going on in the world, there's so many things to cover. So the news kind of moves on, basically. There's very few people that remember the hostages. There's a lot of people that re, that that are seeing the other side, all the mockery of Israel, the all the all the criticism, all the 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 crazy terms that they like to throw throw around. That's where the news is at, if at all, about Israel. Most people don't don't realize what it's like living here. And here's what it's like living here. You go around. I move around the country a lot. I'm way up north, way down south, anywhere in, in the middle, in the center. And everywhere I go, there's yellow chairs. There's memorials. There's, there's people, I hope I get a shot of this. I just saw a, a guy randomly sitting there on um, like the island between the, um, the, 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 the traffic lanes. He's just sitting there in a yellow shirt with, his, um, with a blindfold on his eyes and his hands behind his back tied up. It's funny, there's, there's bombings up north, but in the center of the country, people are going out to get sushi and living their life. Nothing wrong with that. Everybody lives their life. And that's the thing. It's so easy to just just tune everything out. The world is tuned out of what's going on in Israel. Or maybe tuned into some other narratives. And the memorials are a reminder almost every day. As you live your life here in Israel. They're a reminder to, to pray. To pray for the situation. To pray for Israel. To pray for the, um, for the, for the captives. Pray for all the people dying on the other side. To pray for all the suffering. To pray for peace. There's a lot of prayer going on right now in Israel and around the world. And that's and that's what I really want to get into in these videos is, is sending out that message to stay away from the politics, stay stay away from the um, from all the the criticism of either side. We're not here to criticize. I go to Bethlehem. That's that's Palestine. I, I interview people there. I see their plight and I see their suffering as well. I'm not, you can't take sides here. As there, there are plenty of stories in, in everyday life here on the Israeli side, there's so many stories on the, on the other side, on Palestine and Gaza specifically. Anyway, takeaway in this whole thing, we, we live in a crazy world. And if you get stuck in any one of these narratives, you get swept away. Narrat narratives and media often lead you to, to hate because that's what they promote. I'm trying to promote, if not love, peace, okay? Pray for peace. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Pray for the peace in, in this whole situation. It's crazy out there. I'll tell you more stories. There's... there's um, there's really interesting social dynamics happening in Israel. This one is this memorial thing is, is one of them. It's really great. I'll I'll go around get some shots of that. Show you uh, a little clip of uh, of all the memorials. And if you have any questions, write them down in the comments. I'll be happy to answer. And I hope to do like a a Q and A, a live thing at some point. So uh, let's build up to that. And I'll see you tomorrow.